Okay, so on the second video of this uh, module, I'm going to show you how to actually solve our little maze. This will use the exact same one we did on the last one here. Just a simple maze, starting about here, working our way around the box, ending on the X. And uh, we want to do that using the servo library, right? Now, I'm not going to create a, a whole new um, sketch from scratch. Because when we use the library, we have to actually then create all these motions. We did that in class. So you should be able to find a piece of code that has, for example, the turn right, the turn left, the stop, and all that other stuff. And, of course, you can download it from Canvas if you need to. But um, let's kind of quickly review the important parts. Obviously, we're gonna, if we're going to use the library, we have to include the library into the sketch. Um, we have to create a couple of objects, one for each of our two uh, servos that we're going to be using, my left servo and my right servo. We have to attach those servos uh, at some point. You don't have to do it in setup. You can actually do it right before you need them, but we're going to attach them in setup, so they're just going to be attached and ready to go. And you're probably going to want to have um, some functions already created, uh, like, for example, this forward, uh, which is going to pulse the left wheel at 2,000, which is the maximum speed uh, that this one, which is going to be maximum speed clockwise, that uh, this servo can go. Maximum speed counterclockwise is actually 1,000, but um, we know from, if you watched the last video, that my robot tends to turn a little bit, so I'm going to slow this right wheel down just a bit. So I'm going to take it to 1,200 instead of 1,000, and that's going to slow this down so that my robot actually goes straight. And um, let's not forget that the servo library is based on time, not distance, not pulses. So because of that, uh, well, we have to kind of rethink the way we're going to go. We have to think about how long we want to go. And another super important point is that the servo library, once I tell those motors to begin to move, it's going to continue to move even if I come across, for example, a while true statement where typically that would stop many operations. Well, those motors are going to continue to go until I explicitly tell them to do something otherwise, either detach them or stop them. Okay, So we created a function called StopBot which sets both of the servos to 1500, which is the dead center position on a non-modified servo, which means that in the modified servo world, though it's going to bring it to a complete stop. Okay, so both wheels will stop. So that being said, uh, if we're going to start solving this maze, all right, I honestly don't, I, you know, it's going to take me a little bit. I haven't already preset it. I just feel as though I can do it. So we know we're going to start here. We need to go forward. And I don't know exactly. I'm going to throw in there uh, just uh, two seconds. Let's just give that a forward. We'll put that in the maze. Let's go for about two seconds. We'll see how that looks, and then we'll make a judgment from that point. And then, like I said, even though right now, if I call maze from the loop, it's going to come down here, it's going to go forward for two seconds, and then it's going to hit this infinite true, or yeah, this infinite true, so an infinite loop, um, it's not going to stop, okay? I have to explicitly tell it to stop. So I'm going to go down here and find my stop bot, and then what that's going to do is after my two seconds, we'll stop it even for a really short period of time. It's like 10 milliseconds. Okay. And um, that should get us to a complete stop. So let's, let's load this up and let's see what it does. We'll get a feel for how two seconds actually looks. And perhaps, since this is the first time I restart... No, no, I guess it's going quick. We should be good. Although now I said it too soon. Let me pause it till it's actually done loading. Okay, of course that was only like two seconds after I put pause. But let's see what it does. Alright, I'm going to set my robot here. Turn it on. Flashes a few times. So here's two seconds. One, one thousand, two, one thousand. That's actually pretty good. Um, maybe we'll go 
Yeah. Well, actually, let me just go two seconds. So now I need to rotate and then go forward again. So let's do that. I'll set her down here. Let's do a turn right, or what did I call it? I guess I did call it just turn right, T right. And I have no idea. Maybe we should run that one real quick. Um, I'll say 300 milliseconds. Um, we're gonna we're gonna load it and just see what it does. Go, we're gonna build it by chunk by chunk. Okay, until we get pretty confident about it. All right, it's down. It's gonna go forward. Oh, it's gonna stop. Actually, you know, I'm not. See what I did? I actually put my uh, stop in the wrong sequence, so it's just going to spin around and around and around. So we actually learned nothing at all that time, because I have to put the stop last. So let me move this to down here. In fact, we could actually put a brief stop between each one. That wouldn't be such a bad thing, so that way it doesn't happen again. So let me load this up. Okay, and now we should be good to go. So we're going to go forward two seconds, stop in 10 milliseconds, and rotate clearly not far enough. We need to go about two and a half times that, maybe. So let's do that. So 300. Let's do, uh, let's try 700. Okay. Now maybe 700 is a little bit too far, so we'll back off a little bit, but we're going to add a forward. All right. And I'm not going to bore you with everything. I think I'm going to do... Uh, maybe one more thing, and then I'm going to pause it, and then I'll just solve it. So, forward for 600. So that actually puts us, I'm sorry, spinning for 600. Now we need to go forward. doesn't look like we need to go as far as we did this time. We only want to go about, uh, I don't know, about 60% of it or something like that. So I'm going to do a... Uh, Oh, let's try about, uh, we'll try about 1.4. We'll try that. Plug it in. See what we get. Okay. And... Now we can actually go a little bit farther, and then we need to turn. Well, why don't I pause this, and I'll solve it, and then uh, I'll show you what I got. Okay? So I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got some reasonable code, I think, here. And of course, there's no sensor, so it really depends on how you align it. So, well, let's see. Nice turn. Another nice turn. Angle turn, and there you go. I'm on the X. Okay, so let me switch this around. Hopefully, um, that was useful. And here's the final code, and you can see it's a whole bunch of stuff. So, I could probably get rid of all these stop bots here, but I absolutely have to have this one here, or it'll just um, keep going uh, forward after that 2200 uh, milliseconds or 2.2 seconds. So hopefully that was useful, and I'll see you again uh, shortly when we do it with raw code. So I'll be right back.